is an art to be a, a good guest as it is an art to be a good uh, host and interviewer, you yeah. know, and you, and you really need to, to practice these things and, and to find out what the good techniques and everything are like, you know, whichever side of the microphone you're on. The other thing that I, um, I've just coined the term uh, paintbrush words, hmm. um, being able to, to, to paint a picture, Mm. Um, you know, our tone is 38% of our communication and, and being able to, to vary your communication, your intonations, your, your, uh, cadence, you know, mm. the, those delivery styles, because the majority of podcasts are delivered on audio only. There's no privilege of seeing the tears that ran down my face or the laughter or the smile on yours. You know, there's no, mm. there's no, you can't see that. So what we have now then is a requirement, if you will, for an extremely good storyteller. Someone who mm. wants, who makes you want to lean in and listen and then brings you back through it, just like a, a dream weaver. And, the, and they, and they kind of carry you along and then they take you and land you in this place that's safe. And it's storytelling and story weaving. And it's done with words that make you picture what it is that they're talking about. Because if you don't, you're going to lose that audience. The host will look bad. The guests will look bad. And nobody's going to benefit. And that's a shame because that's a waste of a story. Mm. I like what yeah. you did there. <laughs> yeah. That was good. Wow. Yeah, that was really like good. A moment yeah. to appreciate you, that. Yeah. yeah, you didn't even have to like talk. You just, yeah, you know what I mean? It's just like, your and it's, was just so amazing. It's, <laughs> there's so much like you, like you, you sort of um, alluding to it, Gareth, there's like a lot of power in silence sometimes too. And, and pauses, which is, which is often awkward and tough in the moment, but it really works, doesn't it? And it's like, yeah, just, just learning to be clear on your message is, is such a, so important before you be interviewed. So, so thanks for sharing those with us. Um, mm -hmm. But talk, you know, talking about telling one's story um, yeah. and how, you know, why is it actually um, so important for people to tell their story and, and how has it helped you? I appreciate that love. Um, the most significant, one of the most significant moments in my life was a, th a therapist who's, whose attention um, changed my entire being. For once, I didn't feel crazy. And he acknowledged, accepted, and, um, and uh, sort of was compassionate, I guess. So uh, being heard is amazing. Being understood is incredible. Being accepted is transformative. And often that's all it takes. Maybe a person only has to tell their story once. And that's enough. Maybe it's more. But for both the listener and the speaker, everyone is transformed. Mm. Because vocalizing that story, and I say, we've all got a story and that we've literally lived to tell about it. Literally lived to tell about it. Uh, I, I cannot mean that any bigger. And it, um, so what happens is uh, the sharing of that is honest to God, the source of all fulfillment because you're giving back the thing that you came to give that you cultivated so freaking hard to have and you can't give it away if you don't own it first so there's the process for the speaker they have to own what they have you have to own it to give it and when you share it you get more <laughs> now look at that right mm. that's so Let ironic me. <laughs> so I think I've heard it uh, explained better before that's for sure that was amazing <laughs> thank you um, yeah, I mean, we just find that it's just so powerful to actually tell your own story, you know, and and we, we really encourage every single person in the world to tell their own story um, because it's twofold. It's actually quite cathartic in one sort of way, you know, like yeah. speaking about what you've done. It's nice remembering things that have happened as well. But then it's also good for other people to get to know you better. And it's just amazing. Like, uh, you know, we actually interviewed each other not too long ago. And it was so cool because, you know, it was good for us each because we actually wrote, you think your storyboard was long. We wrote like 11 pages <laughs> each. <laughs> it was almost like a <laughs> journal that we did for each other. But, um, but then, it, so that was cool. But then also just for like people that we'd been to school with and whatever, like they, it's amazing how many people reached out to us. And they're like, 
wow, I didn't really know that about you. Or that was so cool or jeepers, you know, like I remember that at school and it was funny. And um, it's just, we uh-huh. really, we really encourage everyone to, to tell their story and also to like, especially to your mates, because mm-hmm. you think you know your friends, but actually you don't, you don't really, really know them a, a lot of the time. No, and your fam and your family as well like you know like you don't always know like what about your parents upbringing and whatever and even like while you were you know growing up with them you don't necessarily know a hell of a lot of stuff so you know if you have that sort of relationship it's really worth actually going and exploring their stories more too mm. and, like, and like you've said as well that being listened to and just being totally heard um in a sort of an interview fashion is also very powerful. You know, it's just, it feels really good and it's, uh, it's just a great feeling, isn't it? So there's so much good that comes from, from these kinds of conversations that, that, that you're having and that we're having and that kind of thing. In the, in the era of just dis- disconnectivity in a world that's more connected than ever, but is more impersonal than ever. Um, right. This is an opportunity to become basically a bedside mate with somebody that you wouldn't normally ever get to listen to on an extensive level. The mm. interviews that you guys do, the depth that you go to with the people that you feature, what a privilege. In the past, the only thing we could do to get close to, close to someone like that was to buy their cassette series or maybe catch them on a show. And now we've got this opportunity to hear, you know, kind of like back in the day when um, Paul Harvey would say, and now for the rest of the story. Yeah. Yeah. It's super important. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to, I guess we, we haven't got a hell of a lot of time left with you. Um, and it's just been like amazing speaking to you and, you know, hearing your story and, you know, uh, just sort of, you know, um, listening and like feeling your energy and it's just it's just really really amazing so, um, it's a one woman show but, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Week. Yeah, da, 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 exactly. so, so so just before we do like sort of finish off because we have a couple of questions we asked at the end like i was just wondering like you know i guess there's many many ladies that you know are uh, suffering is not the right word but you like we go through midlife crisis, not just ladies, but men too, you know, lots, you know, every, all of us, yeah. what kind of advice do you have for people in that sort of phase of their life? So, um, that's a great question. Uh, there is a phenomenon, uh, from, if you can think back to 28 to 31, there was an era of really big change for all of us. And, and looking forward, it was like, what am I doing with the rest of my life? Mm-hmm. You know, it's really intense, right? That's because there was this thing going on called the Saturn return. And it takes two or three years. Saturn return is really intense. And it makes us question where we're, who we are, what we're about. And you're so young. You don't know that you're that young when you're that young. Until you look back and go, God, I was young. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <That's> <laughs> but anyway, what happens is it comes back again. It comes back again. 29 and a half years later, Saturn return mm-hmm. happens again. So this idea that midlife crisis, midlife crisis, that's a term that came up. And it was, and it's, it was supposedly around the age of 40 because people were living to be 80. So, okay. The, I think the crisis part could be avoided if we made choices better back in the thir- when we're 30 and made choices based uh, as we went along based on what I call the big yes. And that's that thing that defies logic, but it looks, it looks crazy to other people, but you know what? It's actually where you're supposed to be, where you're supposed to go. If I said, do you want to go to a party? And you'd be like, eh, not so much. You might what? Backpedal, fib. I got appointments. Nah, nah, nah. All you can do in the future is you could say, I'm not getting a big yes on that. And I'd be like, cool, no worries. Um, so following the big yes is that feeling, that thing that pushes, that pulls, that says, I'm just still small voice. Come on, this way, this way. <laughs> and you listen to it, right? You know, if you listen to it, then you're not going to have a crisis later. So I'm just saying about that part. But as far as it goes in midlife, you know, the, the concept about it is, is a, a reassessment. Well, it's also one of the phenomenons about it is that uh, you, all the things that you accumulated, whether it's beliefs or a bunch of really bad hats or a lot of shoes or some really shitty people in your life, all of it, all of it goes, it goes. And, 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 and you're, you're then your, 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 your period of accumulation is now 
the opposite. You're uncluttering your mind, you're uncluttering your world, you're looking at what's next. And, mm -hmm. and the interesting part now is that we have people living three decades longer than they used to. That's a mm -hmm. long time. So what that means is we now have an area of life in which people don't even know what to do with themselves. They, they expected to retire at 55 or 60. I can't even imagine that now. But, but now they've got all this time. And what are they going to do with themselves? Well, hopefully, hopefully, you know, they'll find their way to the global microphone and, uh, and share their story and, and learn to have a ripper of a good time. If you hang out with some Aussies or some South Africans, you'll be guaranteed a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy cape, fold, mountain range. Gotta be quick so 